The calendars have been set. This date has been circled for a long time coming now. It's opening night of the 2021 Fall Collegiate Soccer season, and we've got Tennessee and Florida Gulf Coast. Well, joining me, former Tennessee defender Tory Beeler Watson, Andy Brock, wishing you a happy opening night. We're really excited for the season to start. Tennessee, they go on pursuit of defending their SEC East title from a season ago. To do so, they return nine starters. And starting up top for them is Jada Thomas and Mackenzie George, and together they account for almost half the goals for Tennessee. They're a dynamic duo, and what makes them so dangerous is the fact that they play with an immense amount of pace and energy, but consistently, and that's what makes them tough to defend. Well, Tennessee's not the only team on the pitch tonight returning some dynamic starters. Louise Lilback for Florida Gulf Coast, their leading scorer last season. She had seven goals on this season for this team. She will be their target forward up top. She's creative on the ball. She's explosive in space, but what makes her so dangerous is her ability to get players into the attack, numbers into the attack. Well, certainly the Eagles are going to have their hands full tonight, the top two boards, especially with Jada Thomas. And she's phenomenal at creating that separation. She has a nose for the goal, and she is able to put balls away at the most important times for this Tennessee team. 12 goals a season ago in her freshman season led the SEC Conference. Five game-winning game goals is a program record. And what makes this so awesome is the fact that she is just a redshirt sophomore for Tennessee. Lots to come for her. You see the numbers from Thomas Gotti. 12 goals, but on the other end, Mackenzie George is really the facilitator. She is. She is the she is the ying to Jada Thomas's yang. Whatever Jada Thomas doesn't have, Mackenzie George makes up for. Together, they are dynamite. Well, both will be up front for the Tennessee offense tonight. Jada Thomas, four multi-score games in a row last spring. She's ready to pick right back up where she left off. Well, Tennessee and Florida Gulf Coast just minutes away from kickoff for the 2021 fall season. Tennessee and Florida Gulf Coast under the lights at Regal Soccer Stadium for the first time this fall in 2021. Just about set to get things kicked off. We'll take a look at the starting lineups first for Florida Gulf Coast. Jim Blankenship goes with a 3-5-2 tonight. And anchoring that back line for Florida Gulf Coast is going to be Lane. Her presence alone at 5'10", along with her composure over the ball and her 1v1 defending is going to be important. And head, head coach Brian Pitsky for Tennessee goes with his classic 4-4-2. Four, four, We've already talked about the top two forwards. Who else you like, Tori? I really like uh, Rain in the back. She's a freshman, and then also getting a start for them is, uh, is Lawson Rennie, who's also on the back line. That's a new face to the back line. I think Tennessee's going to have a lot, a lot of energy and a lot of pace tonight. New faces all around for both sides as some fresh newcomers get their first look to start the regular season. First touch here in Knoxville to kick things off. The first ever matchup between these two schools. Tennessee has faced off against the Atlantic Sun four different times and they're undefeated in those four efforts. Two wins and two ties with the first chance against the Eagles. And we are underway here at Regal Soccer Stadium as we're here with you for the start of the fall season. So to see wearing the home jerseys, white, the orange numbers, Florida Gulf Coast comes out in the blue with the white numbers. Tillett. Over to Eskid into the attacking third. Gets by Curtis. Eskid cross in near post. And offside. It's always exciting, the first game the first opening match of the season for both teams is always really exciting. You know, they're finally getting the opportunity to beat up on somebody else other than themselves, being able to get through preseason and, and finally, you know, really see your work pay off is, is exciting for both teams. And much different pace this season than both sides were used to in what was a, a different year, obviously a year ago. Both teams having more time to prep and both getting an exhibition game out of, out of the way.
last year was undoubtedly, you know, very different than, than what I think many athletic teams were used to seeing. But especially for Tennessee, I mean, they do so much of their prep work throughout the summer and then early, you know, July, August, and all of these teams were paralyzed by the pandemic. Huff into the 18, back hill, it turned in. Jada Thomas, flying start for Tennessee. That was soccer brilliance at its absolute finest, and this is one of the things that makes Jada Thomas so dangerous when she's in the attack. Her presence within the box, just knowing exactly where she needs to be. It's a simple little flick that surprises Florida Gulf Coast. You have the cross perfectly placed. You can see Jada Thomas comes in, quick little spin move with that hill flick. And again, you get the service from Taylor Huff. Phenomenal finish. Not much that Sullivan could do on that one. Didn't even see it coming. And what a way to start your campaign for Jada Thomas to open her account. Doesn't seem like she's lost a bit of momentum at all. Not at all, and, and I really have to give it to Taylor Huff. She's another one of those freshmen that stepped out onto the field for Tennessee tonight. She's doing phenomenal things. Just the work rate and the energy that this Tennessee team is playing with at the moment is something to take note of. Taylor Huff, a part of that 17th ranked recruiting class that head coach Brian Pitsky brings into Knoxville this season. Certainly high accolades coming out of the state of Ohio. A national player of the year and has already made an impact in the first two minutes as a ball. And you're going to see Florida Gulf Coast look to play a lot of services into Lil Beck's feet. She serves as that nine player, if you will, the, the center forward up top. So they're going to look for her. She's exceptional at being able to keep control of the ball, turn, she has great field awareness, and her ability to get numbers into the attack is what's going to be key tonight against Tennessee. The more she can hold the ball, draw the defense up, and slot players in and behind, that's where, to, that's where Florida Gulf Coast is going to find success against Tennessee. The Eagles coming off what was a seven-win shortened season in which they only participated in the spring side of things, weren't able to play in the fall a team that's historically been amongst the top of the Atlantic Sun. Thomas looking to play Tillett through. A lot of early pressure from the Tennessee front. That's nice work by Coleman in the middle for Florida Gulf Coast, keeping her composure, being able to maintain possession of the ball. She earns her team that foul at the moment. This could be an opportunity for the Eagles to maintain possession in their offensive third. They're down to the left wing for LeBay. Eskin and Katz on the defense for the Volunteers. And LeBay is another player that you want to pay special attention to. She's one of the players, in addition to Lang, that was identified as a top 100 freshman for the 2021 spring by Top Drawer Soccer. Laid through for McKenzie George on the right wing. Working on Lang. George takes another deflection back for Thomas. And wrapped in by Katie Sullivan. And that was tough 1v1 defending by Clark against Jada Thomas. The thing about Mackenzie George and Jada Thomas up top is they're so quick. The synchronicity that these two players play with is incredible. They can almost read each other's minds. You know, you see Mackenzie George checking out. You see the timing of Jada Thomas on that run. And if had Clark not been there just to give her a little bit of nudge, I think Jada Thomas would have been able to convert that. Tennessee has seen some early chances so far in the first five minutes. Obviously one resulting in the fabulous finish from Jada Thomas. Maybe not as much as a surprise as you might think given Tennessee had a phenomenal outing against Alabama in their exhibition game last week. Go 
What I think Florida Gulf Coast is going to have to be careful of is right now they're playing with three lone backs. So you've got the center back in Lang, and then you've got Curtis and Clark, who are each have man-to-man -man responsibilities on Thomas and George. If one of those players gets beat, it's up to Lang to slide over and provide that cover, which creates that 1v1 opportunity with Thomas and George. And I can guarantee you that Coach Penske and his team is going to hedge their bets on those 1v1s. Well, Tennessee earns the quarter kick. In their exhibition tie against Alabama. They earned 10 corner kicks. Looks like Saniah Clark a little, a little banged up after the tackle. Service in. And it hits off the noggin of Rennie and off the goal line. And Rennie was phenomenal in the exhibition match against Alabama. You mentioned the quality of services that Tennessee's been able to put in on those corner kicks. Rennie had almost two conversions in that exhibition game against Tennessee, and that's really been a focal point on their offense for the last two seasons, is being able to convert corner kicks or set pieces when you need to. And Andy, I say it every season, and I'll continue to say it, when it comes to tournament time, it's those moments that separate the good teams from the great teams. Huff plays the ball for Thomas. Thomas racing with Clark. It's going to be interesting to see how that back three of the Eagles attempt to keep up with Thomas and George. Jada Thomas already won goal to open up her account for the 2021 fall season. Mentioned SEC leading 12 goals a season ago, nine of which came in that spring effort. As Claire Rain puts a shot on goal, Solvin easily wraps around it. And you were talking about Jada Thomas. She had five game-winning goals for Tennessee last year. I mean, exceptional freshman campaign. Absolutely phenomenal. But my question is, is what is she going to do this year? You know, at this point, everybody knows who Jada Thomas is. What is she going to do to continue to elevate her game? Well, head coach for Tennessee, Brian Pinsky, made it well known that Thomas and George certainly at this point are aware they're going to have a target on their back. And he knows that good teams, they can find different players to get in on the goal scoring effort, hoping for a real team effort tonight. Player Rain rushing forward at just a bit too hard of a touch. And Andy, we spoke with Coach Penske, and we talked about the importance of having additional numbers outside of just George and Thomas putting those numbers up for you. And it kind of makes me look back at that 2018 team that Tennessee had that was so successful. And that season alone, they had 24 different players contributing to their goals, which was phenomenal. Now keep in mind, they also had Bunny Shaw and Danielle Marcano, which accounted for almost half their goals. But still, they had an exceptional season. And the reason why that team was able to advance to the quarterfinals of the NCAAs and were seeded number two was because it was a complete team effort. It took a number of players to make it work. Well, Tennessee under Coach Pitsky has reached new heights in the NCAA tournament. You mentioned 2018, first trip to the quarterfinals. And it took a host of balls to make it happen. Took seven or more players, each having three or more goals for Tennessee to reach the heights of the quarterfinals in 2018. George, quick turn on Clark, enters the 18, plays it forward, just a bit long for Thomas. And you can see how it happens as Mackenzie George isolates Clark over there on 1v1. Once Mackenzie George beats Clark, Lang has to slide over, which leaves Jada Thomas on that backside wide open 1v1. So it's a lot of pressure on these back lines for Florida Gulf Coast. I think that that says a lot about Coach Blankenship and what he thinks of his players to be able to withstand this type of pressure. Coach Blankenship has never shied away from taking on the Power Five opponent, a team that's used to going on the road and playing some of the nation's top talent as they'll play the number one team in the nation, Florida State, later on this season. A program under Jim Blankenship, when he started it in 2007, has been incredibly successful since then. Always a presence in the Atlantic Sun Conference. 
And I think he's doing phenomenal things with this program. Five-time coach of the year in the conference. This team has won the Atlantic Sun regular season championship nine separate times, nine in 10 years from 2010 to 2019. It figures to get his team back to the tournament. He knows he has to win the tournament, the A-Sun tournament, to get back to the NCAA tournament. Well, and when you take a look at the quality of players that he's turned out, five Atlantic Sun players of the year, six Atlantic Sun defensive players of the year, and you know, as a player, you want to play. A, you want to play for a coach and for a program that's going to really take the time to continue to work on your development. I mean, sure, you want to win games, you want to advance to championships, uh, you know. But it's also about that player development. He's got several players that have gone on to play in the professional leagues, and I think you know now more than ever, that's what players are looking for. They want that continued experience and that growth, and he's certainly doing it here at Florida Gulf Coast. Well, the Eagles went down to Miami in an exhibition game, which ended up in a 2-2 draw. Coach Blake and Chip, he started off as the first head coach in program history with the Hurricanes and regularly has them on their schedule. An exhibition game in which they got a first look at a, a, what is a very young team. Now, a lot of players got to play last year, but due to the COVID eligibility rules, technically he has 15 freshmen still. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out for programs across the country, just in terms of eligibility, who stays, who goes. Um, but, you know, I think it certainly makes for a lot of really exciting soccer for all of us to watch. Tilt ends the 18. Sward by Katie Sullivan. And a quick throw out. Katie Sullivan in on goal for the Eagles. A transfer out of Creighton is given the nod for the start. She brings a little bit of experience and some competition to a really experienced goalkeeper room. And a turnover from the Eagles on Tennessee's attacking third. You know, Coach Blankenship, when we spoke to him, he said, you know, most important thing is we want our kids to come in here, our players to come in here and compete, compete at the highest level. And this is such a great opportunity for this team to do this. Um, and, you know, Tennessee's not going to be the best team that they play. They've got even more teams down there. They've got three teams that made it to the NCAA tournament in the spring last year on their schedule, and that's what he likes. He likes putting together a competitive schedule that challenges, that stretches his team to constantly elevate their play. That was something that they weren't able to do a season ago is have some of these tougher non-conference games due to COVID-19 restrictions. Now finally getting to have that prep in some of these tougher games to help them get ready for their Atlantic Sun part of their schedule. On the move is George, service into the box. Still bouncing around. Eskin looking for Thomas, flicked up in the air. They had a desperation clearance for Clark. The Eagles getting a lot of work defensively. The communication has to be absolutely exceptional across that back line. You can see the header from Eskin and Jada Thomas doing everything she can to get that quick flick past Sullivan. But Clark knows as a defender, if your keeper comes out, you run post. You run to the back post. Another service in. Been bowling around the box. Thomas winds up with it, fires, and deflected past the goal line. Thomas put some heat on it. She doesn't need much room to have an impact. She's got such a phenomenal shot. The force that she puts on that, you could see Sullivan would have preferred to have caught it, but instead there's a little bit of a bounce off of it. Can't help but to think that has a lot to do with the power that Jada Thomas puts on it. A one touch strikes it. A lot of power on that. Tennessee, another corner service in. Burdett almost got a piece of it. 
And an eagle is down, they're going to stop play. And that's not the player that you want to see go down for the Eagles. That's Lang. She's the anchor on the back line for this team. At 5'10", she's a phenomenal player. Joined this team, played at a very high level in Sweden. She was one, in two, one of two freshmen in the A-Sun a year ago that earned first team honors in a preseason watch list in the conference. And you can see Lang and Abby, Abby Burdett just going up. Looks as if there was a small collision in the heads. And obviously, with the concussion protocol that's in play now, anytime a player takes an injury to the head, it's required that the training staff has to do a proper assessment before the player can return to the game. Lang hailing from Sweden, member of the U19 the Swedish national team, where she's their captain. A lot of national team experience for her. One of three Swedish connected players on the pitch tonight for Florida Gulf Coast. And she doesn't waste any time coming back in. Like you said, Tori Lang has got to be that anchor for an Eagles team who's already down one in this game. First 15 minutes. What has Tennessee done well so far to have earned this lead? I think Tennessee is doing a great job of, of identifying where the open pockets of space are and getting numbers into the attack. You see when they're playing the ball forward, they're advancing players from the defensive line, from the midfield line, so they're really doing a lot to create those numbers up opportunities. That mismatch is, is causing difficulty for the Eagles, trying to find the marks. There seems to always be that one extra open player. Tennessee off to a flying start in game one of the 2021 fall campaign. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee, Regal Soccer Stadium. Tori Beeler Watson, Andy Brock with you here. I think the Eagles just need to continue to maintain their patience and have confidence in their ability to, to, to play passes on the ground and, and to maintain that possession. Where the opportunities are going to come for them is being able to quickly counterattack. Once they win the ball defensively, releasing it forward up top for Lilbeck to come across or Spitzer. Puff off the reception from George. It takes a deflection, but Sullivan somehow keeps it in play. And LeBay's going to win it back. And that extra energy that Sullivan put forth to try to prevent a corner kick tells you how dangerous Tennessee is inside the box on corner kicks. Deflection off the referee goes against the Eagles way. It's wrong place, wrong time. And you can see Taylor Huff gets that deflection and Sullivan does everything that she can. And that's a heads up play. She recognizes that it's off of her player. She's doing everything she can to prevent that corner kick and keep Tennessee out of being in position to score again. Sullivan, the junior keeper from Wheaton, Illinois, a two-year starter and a transfer from Creighton. Not play last season in 2020, but in 2019 started 10 games and had 48 saves. Certainly a big addition for this Florida Gulf Coast team. It adds a little bit of maturity, a lot of experience and goal. Playing, playing it deep, trying to find a little back who's trying to make an impact in this game. I think that the Eagles are going to have to continue to release the ball forward a little bit more often. I mean, certainly they're not a team who likes to play that long ball often. A lot of people don't like to get caught in that run and gun game. However, given that they've got three three players on the back line, it's nice every now and again to give your defense a break, bypass the midfield, get the ball into the offensive third for you and try to get numbers into the attack. Tennessee is pressing so high with their defenders into the attack and their midfielders that you need to find a way to set them back. And the only way you're going to do that is to either by adding another forward up top and playing with three forwards across the top, or you have to play more long balls to keep them honest and keep them at home. Rain a deep throw in. Hard touch from George. And Eagles are able to get it out of there. Right, 
and another deep throw. Here's Huff. Quick move from Huff, deflected off Rain and pass the touchline. And you can see you've got George, Huff, and Rain all a part of that attack right there. Rain is a defender, Huff is a midfielder. So being able to get Rain into the attack gives Tennessee that numbers up advantage, especially on that lefter side. Claire Rain and Huff, both two freshmen that earned a lot of praise from Coach Brian Pinsky after that exhibition game. Two players with a lot of energy. And the more Tennessee can switch the point of attack from the left side to the other, it's really gonna stretch that defense. Eskin to Huff, just over the top of the bar. Huff caught it well. And that was quick playmaking. It kind of transitioned through Tillett, who kicked the ball out wide to the right-hand side and built play. So it moved quickly, and that transition is what is going to be important. You can see Katz plays that ball into Eskin. Eskin gets the cross, and then Huff with a one-time finish. And that all happened because Tennessee moved the ball quickly from one side of the field to the other. The more they do that, they're going to create separation and pockets of play against this Eagles defense. Maddie Eskin with the service in. A lot of speed she possesses on the wing, hoping to get more involved in some goal scoring chances this season. Abby Burdett going hard into Lindstedt. Here's Huff again, a rolling screamer scooped up by Sullivan. It's a good idea by Scarpelli. Unfortunately, LeBay wasn't quite on the same page. Ball in as Sullivan off her line rushes forward before it gets anywhere near Thomas. Nice footwork by LeBay on the outside. Tennessee's been dominant in possession thus far. Claire Rain moving past the wings and pass past the touchline. You know, Tennessee's always done a phenomenal job of recruiting players who um, are quick, light on their feet. But one thing I've really seen a difference in this team this year as opposed to last is that every single one of their players on the field is confident in their ability to take players one-on-one. -on -one. And not only can they take them on, but they're exceptional at being able to find this space in and behind them. You can see Claire Rain coming out of the back. She's not afraid to take players one-on-one. -on -one. So as a defender, she has that attacking mentality, and that's extremely dangerous. Eagles win possession back, Lil back. Fighting with Ostrom and Burdett, eventually winning the ball. Tennessee without defender Ren French for their season opener. Fifth year grad student, gain an extra year of COVID eligibility. As ball played in for the box for Thomas, off the goal line for a goal kick. And that was nice work by Clark just to see to it that that ball was out of play. She had Thomas in hot pursuit right on her heels. Great decision making by Clark to make sure that that ball was out of bounds. But you just saw Red and French there, fifth year defender out of Franklin, Tennessee. 60 caps for the Bulls, 54 career starts. Definitely a miss in that back line tonight. Ruled inactive for game one. But back for another year, that's a huge win for Coach Pinsky and his staff. And I think this is a good opportunity for Tennessee just to play in some new people. Um, Ren French obviously played against Alabama. She did an exceptional job. Her presence on the field, the leadership that she brings when she's out there, she has such poise and confidence. Um, her ability to communicate and dictate play, it's something that I think Tennessee was really going to benefit this year, having her as a fifth year. She's on the SEC preseason watch list for top players to look out for in a conference that is stacked and loaded with returning talent. And you know, something else I'd like to point out about French is the fact that she was a part of that 2018 team. So she's been on both ends of the spectrums where 
you know, she's experienced a lot of success and she's experienced disappointment by not being a part of the NCAA tournament this past year. So, um, you know, herself along with Abby Burdett and Mackenzie Ostrom, those three remember what it's like. And given the fact that they've got an opportunity to make a difference, what is their lasting legacy going to be on this program in their final season? This time last year, Tennessee took a season opening defeat 3-1 to Alabama. Afterwards, had a team meeting to decide what they wanted their goals of the season to be as a service in to Sullivan. But the players themselves got together, had a team-only meeting after a 3-1 loss to start the season to Alabama. These senior leaders, like French, like Ostrom and Burdett, they said, what, what do we want our goals to be this year? Challenged the team to achieve these goals eight weeks later, they're SEC East champs. What I think people have to remember, too, is the success that you experience happens in the work that you do during the summer, right? And so last year was a little bit different because of COVID, all the different restrictions on athletes and, and just general public. Um, they had an opportunity, they had no excuse, they had the opportunity to get after it, right? And so their preseason preparation has looked a lot different and I think we're seeing a fitter Tennessee team, a much more explosive Tennessee team, um, and a team that's just a lot hungrier. Coach Pitsky said these same team leaders from last year who remain on the team made it a tradition. They got back together, players only, no coaches involved. This was just up to these senior leaders, set goals for themselves again this year, and a lot of that is to do well once again in the SEC and to maybe get back to the NCAA tournament. And you see what they did last season, eight wins, SEC East champions, first time since 05, and had some big wins against top 10 opponents. Well, and I think, you know, the, you have to remember, coaches can want all these things, but if the players don't want it for themselves, and they don't have the buy-in, it's not going to happen. So the fact that you've got the leadership that you do on this Tennessee team and players that respect each other on the level that they do, um, I think it, it's the, you know, I think it's the beginning recipe to something that could be really, really special. Tennessee certainly making that noise, getting the double buy in Orange Beach last year. Ultimately, they're losing in their first game to the eventual tournament champions in Vanderbilt. But that kind of catapulted them to that 4-2 and two spring in which we saw a lot of offense and really an improved offense from even when they won the East in the fall. Thomas gives way back to the Eagles. Courtney Coleman. Curtis off to LeBay. Eagles looking to get on their offensive third. Service in from LeBay, searching for Spitzer up to Romig. No problem for Lindsey Romig. And Spitzer is talk about leaders. She is one of those players for the Eagles that has really done a lot. And Coach Blankenship talks about just the energy that she brings and just her spirit. Her work rate on this team is absolutely unparalleled to other people. And you can see she wants it. You know, she's one of those players who's not afraid to compete every time out. And by doing so, she elevates the play of those around her as well. Spitzer brings a lot of leadership for a young team. Bitch, it technically has 15 freshmen on it as well. And a couple of subs for the first time this evening. Claudia DiPasupel in for Tennessee as well as freshman Jordan Fusco making her first appearance. We had for the Eagles, Alima Lanson. She steps in along with Ashley Brentlinger. And when, when you look at the preseason preparation that both of these teams had this year as opposed to last year, the Eagles have five international players on their team, three from Sweden, one from Canada, and one from Denmark. And, and we should note that the player from Denmark helped her U19 team win the national title. But due to COVID, they're having a hard time getting her in country. So, um, you know, additional adversities that, that athletics are, are continuing to face as a result of the pandemic. Okay, hold the 12. You can see LeBay just clips her. That's Tara Katz, who's going for the quick cross. Come with me, come with me. 
Deepasupal to get her first touch. Balls in. Sullivan off of her gloves. And in the back of the net. Can credit it to Claudia Deepasupal. First touch of the season. First goal for Deepasupal. And it's 2 0 to Tennessee. They're on their way. Deepa Supel is known for her services on set piece. She has a lethal left foot service, and you can see Sullivan just goes up, slips between her fingers there. And you've got Spitzer on the backside doing what she can. Unfortunately, it's an own goal. Good service by Deepa Supel, and that was something Coach Pinsky had highlighted. Just the quality of serves that she's able to put forth for this team on those set pieces. Let's talk about instant impact from Deepa Supel. She did not participate last spring, was held out with knee injury after an incredible fall season where she led the conference with five assists. That was still the team lead after it was all said and done. And like you said, the impact was really felt on those services from the corners and from set pieces like that. Another ball batted up. Thomas trying to gain control. Here's George. Back to Thomas. This time the glove works there for Solden. Just her awareness. When you watch Jordan inside the box, her positional awareness, the way that she's able to get square on the ball and as quick as she's able to get over the ball, that is that is absolutely exceptional. I mean, she just knows exactly where to put her body, and it's a one-two shot or a one-time shot. Does not give much time for a defender to really react. If you're not on her like glue, you're going to give up a goal for your team. Left high! Thomas receives in the 18. Deflected back. It's Coleman clearing things. Ball played down, Lil Beck fighting with Rennie. It's Hannah Zaluski who tried to retain possession. Eagles still fighting. Melanson. Reflected off Zaluski and out of play. Hannah Zaluski transfer as Tennessee received from George Washington. And she figures to get a lot of time in that outside back slot, a, a position in which Tennessee has a lot of depth in. And that's a position they need a lot of depth in, <laughs> given the work rate that is demanded from those outside backs. I mean, if you're playing for Tennessee as an outside back, you've got to be skilled in 1v1. You have to have exceptional vision. You have to be able to serve the ball. And you have to be able to move up and down the pitch quickly. Well, Zaluski brings a lot of experience from George Washington. 50 career starts for 10 starts just a season ago. And in the 2019, she was second team all A-10 Figures to be either a big jolt off the bench or try to vie for a starting role at some point. She's still fairly new to this Tennessee program, still was not cleared for their exhibition game from NCAA last week. Movement from Tennessee. George, top of the 18, deflected. Deepa Supel sets, fires. Looking for Huff, it just popped straight up. And for a freshman, Taylor Huff is playing absolutely just outstanding in my opinion. She was able to train with the team in the spring. She joined them in the spring, but was not able to play games due to eligibility. But she's absolutely exceptional on the field. And Jordan Fusco, another freshman, she's one of those players that um, – has a spark plug. You know, you're always told if you're coming in off the bench, you have to be able to change the pace of the game. And we saw her do that in the exhibition against Alabama. She came in and immediately had an impact. She's another one of those players that I think is, is going to have an outstanding start for Tennessee this year. Already, already a lot of instant impact from some of these Tennessee newcomers. Which they bring in four high school All-Americans, including the United Soccer Coaches High School Player of the Year, Taylor Huff. Yes, excuse me. I think Jordan Fusco came this spring. Taylor Huff came in the, the summer. Yeah. 
little over 30 minutes in for the first 45 minutes for both of these sides. Tennessee leading 2 0 early. As Deep Asupal ricochets one back to Sullivan. Goal from Jada Thomas. And a gift. Claudia Deep Asupal off the hands of Sullivan has Tennessee the lead here early. If you're the Eagles, as we start nearing the end of this first 45, what, what is Coach Blankenship needing to see here for it to be a positive first start? You know, I think. Number one, he, he's playing a 3-5-2 formation. Again, I think you need to do what you can to, to step Tennessee's defenders back. So they, they're continuously getting numbers in the attack. So I think out of your five midfielders, they need to step up and pressure the ball faster. So those defensive lines have to be setting up higher up on the field. There's too many gaps for this Tennessee team to play into right now through the middle of the field. Here's George. Deepa Supel. Off the head of Huff and possessed by LeBay. And I really think that they should potentially consider changing their formation to a 4-4-2. I know the, the idea was probably to have more numbers in the middle of the field, but I don't think that's where the threat's coming from at the moment for the Eagles. I think where they're seeing the most damage done is on the outside. Tennessee's pushing numbers up on the wings. So provide more cover in the middle. If you put four defenders on your back line, if one of your outside defenders gets beat, one of your center back slides over, you still have two more people to cover on that back post. I think where they've gotten caught is that his back post 1v1 isolations. Tennessee already 10 shots compared to Florida Gulf Coast's one. As the Eagles service one into the box and punched out. Overall, though, if I'm Coach Blankenship, I'm telling my team when we go in the locker room, have confidence in yourselves. You guys are capable of playing with this team. You just have to compete. We have to play a little bit quicker. Our opportunities are going to come. Romig stabs the shot from LeBay. Lindsay Romig, the junior keeper, in goal for another season here on Rocky Top. Already featured in several different record book statistics for this Tennessee side, and she's also a part of the preseason watch list this year in the SEC. Lindsay Romig and goal is, is such a powerhouse. I mean, when you're looking for a keeper, you want somebody who's going to be able to make those big time saves for you. And, you know, I think being a goalkeeper is one of the difficult positions because if you are playing for a good team, and you're not getting a lot of action, you still have to be zeroed in on the game to be able to come up with those moments. You can see a card issued there. It looks like a yellow on Ashley Brentlinger. She's coming in, just a bit of a stab. A little bit of a trip there. That's on Brentlinger, the senior midfielder. the first yellow of the evening. Well, Deepa Supal will try to replicate. <laughs> Service in looking for Rennie. Ed LeBay clears. Move on the outside from Nelson. Plays through Fusco, looking for George. Still a threat. An offside. Fusco just a bit in front. And that extra effort that Fusco put forward to get that ball across, make sure it didn't go across the end line, and then the, the, the placement that she put, she found George right in front of the goal. Very well executed. And you can see one change already that the Eagles have made. They've pulled Spitzer from up top and moved her more into an outside defender position slash midfield. 
wanting her recovery speed, I'm assuming, on this on the outside. Well, when asked, head coach Jim Blankenship mentioned he has a plan that has worked in the A-Sun for quite a while. Obviously, he wants a result against a good Tennessee team, but he wants to see his team execute that plan, not panic against a tough road opponent. And so far, maybe a couple of adjustments may help out here. Play forward looking for George. Collision in the box. And offside is the call from the line judge. And Fusco's ability to get her head up and see George running, the timing of that pass was on par. And she's playing well above a freshman. You can see that she just strikes it. Perfect amount of pace. The space of where she placed that ball, it gives Mackenzie George just enough time to run on, split between those two defenders. And Clark coming across with a, a paramount save for this Eagles team. Lidstep. I think Spitzer. And we're starting to see the Eagles try to establish more of a rhythm. And I think if I'm Coach Blankenship and his staff, that's one of the things, one of the points of communication that I would have in the locker room is just believe in yourselves. Let's look to establish more of a rhythm of play. Kenzie George tried to flip the field head to head with Josie Curtis. Not much options, not many options for her in that moment. Mass substitutions for Tennessee. You see Gina Chatterton and Brooke Wilson checks into the game for Tennessee. Wilson, a transfer from Arizona a season ago, played 25 minutes in the season opener last year before tearing her ACL and is now back for her first action since. Here's Wilson now, first touches. Cleared away. And the transition, the time that it takes for the Eagles to get off their back line, you can see their whole midfield line is holding back. So there's a good amount of space between their midfield line and their front line. And that gap right there is what's, is what's really troubling the Eagles at the moment. Anytime the balls play forward, they have to move quickly as a unit. They have to squeeze the Tennessee team, eliminate the open space for them to be able to play into. Here's Deepa Supel. Ricocheted back to a, an eagle in blue. Five to play here at Regal Soccer Stadium. Opening night, Tennessee with the 2-0 lead. Again, I think it's that transition from offense to defense that has to come at an accelerated pace for this Florida Gulf Coast team. They're getting caught a little bit on their heels when they win the ball and they're able to move the ball forward. They're not putting the numbers forward that they need. Space for Deepa Supel running down the wing. He's looking for Issa Cook. Ball in for Cook again. Lang challenging on that one. Cook a shot wound up by Sullivan. And you can see that they're not necessarily, the Eagles aren't challenging those outside balls as much. They're kind of allowing those services in. And I think it's almost working to their advantage at the moment because they're able to keep more players in the middle on that back line. They've got four players on that back line, which I think is helpful. The pressure cover balance. Looks a little cleaner. Wilson played it off to Chatterton, and LeBay runs forward to clear it away. And you've noticed Zoe Spitzer started out at the front for the Eagles, has now moved back into a right-back spot. And Coach Blankenship shared with us that she's a player that we'd likely see 
a little bit of all over the field, and a lot of that is just her versatility and her ability to compete. Um, as we mentioned before, her leadership, her work rate. This team is stacked. They've got quite a few exceptional players. Lynn Stett, she's a player we're starting to see a little bit more of in the middle of the field. She plays that holding midfielder. I think we need to see more of a presence from her winning the balls and being able to possess them wide. I think that will be helpful for the Eagles in the second half as well. Quarter kick for Tennessee. Time winding down at half number one. Already a two goal advantage. Diva Supo. Off the head of Lang. Tees up perfectly for Fusco, but just skewed off to the right. And off LeBay, another corner. And when we're looking at quality of service on corner kicks, what makes Dippa Supel so exceptional is her ability to get up underneath the ball. She puts an arcing height on it. The higher the ball is, the more time players have to run in. It's a floating ball. It's not a driven ball. Dippa Supel again. Here's Maria Nelson, and just a bit high. The pace, the spin on her serves make it very easy for Tennessee's team just to redirect the ball. You can see the service as she comes in, she puts the back spin on it. That type of spin is what enables Tennessee players just to be able to redirect it. You can see the arc that she puts on it. Doing so allows players to time the headers just right. Tennessee try to find out if they have anything left here in the first 45. Already two goals to their name to open up their 2021 account. And the Eagles win possession back. Tennessee out shooting Florida Gulf Coast 12 shots to two in half number one. Certainly winning the possession game thus far. There's LeBay. Ball winds up for Paradis. Eagles one last effort in half number one. Ten seconds remaining, they gotta act quick. And it'll be Lilback who launches one for Romig. Easy field for Romig, and that'll end the first 45. Tennessee, a statement start. Two-nothing early advantage as we head to the break. Our kids coming off of the SEC title last year and with a number of those kids returning this year, their goals just get higher. This year, they want to repeat in the East, but they want, they've want they set a goal for themselves to try and win an outright SEC championship this fall. And that's not a goal that's coming from the coaching staff, that's coming from the players and they're owning that. Sends in the corner, knocked down, knocked in! For the first time in a couple years, um, our pendulum has swung to having more juniors and seniors than freshmen and sophomores, and that's a big deal.
just means you have more kids that have been around the block. Um, they're excited to, to attempt to repeat. Um, and they're older. It also means they're ready to take more ownership of the team and any team worth its salt is certainly 100% owned by the team. Any good team that wants to set high goals and achieve high goals, they have to own the team. In the most difficult of moments on the field, when in a sport of no timeouts of soccer, right, they have to make little tweaks and adjustments on the fly within the game. The best players, the best teammates, the best leaders, they have to manage that. They had growth from all the preseason, growth from the Alabama game. Really proud of the number of corner kicks we, we created, and even our execution on those corner kicks was pretty good. Proud of creating 18 shots. Um, we don't have, we didn't have any goals to, to, to show for that, so got to take that next step. We got to put the ball in the back of the net if you want to win games. And so, um, you know, all you can do is create chances in the game, and then hopefully the execution in the final third. And then, you know, in terms of shots allowed, we only allowed three shots against Alabama. And so I don't know that we're going to do a whole lot better than that. But can we keep it in that ballpark? If we can keep it in that ballpark, we give ourselves a chance. Beautiful night in Knoxville. The home side has a 2-0 lead. Tennessee up over Florida Gulf Coast. You're watching college soccer on SEC Network. We've got highlights and stats on the other side. First 45 minutes of the season out of the way. The home team, Tennessee Volunteers, have a 2-0 lead over Florida Gulf Coast. We're with Julia Watson, Andy Brock here with you. First half dominated by Tennessee. Jada Thomas, a wonder goal to kick things off. And they started out with a bang. Taylor Huff drives down to the corner, crosses it. Jada Thomas sets up and spins her defender with a heel flick. Just a nasty goal, way to put it away. And then Claudia Dipasupel with the left-footed hanger. Set piece, Sullivan just not able to hang on to it, giving Tennessee that 2-0 lead. Tennessee out shooting the Eagles 14-3. They've dominated the possession and really have looked like the better team so far. Tennessee has certainly dominated this half. We'll see how Florida Gulf Coast responds coming up next. 2-0, Tennessee has the lead. Second half coming up next. Start of the second half here at Regal Soccer Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. The Volunteers have a 2-0 lead over Florida Gulf Coast. As we are set to finish out the final 45 minutes. It was Jada Thomas in the second minute. Claudia Deepasupal in the 29th as Tennessee with their two-goal advantage as they stand now. And Tori coming out of the locker room. You're a fly on the wall in both of these sides. What are these coaches saying to their teams here for this last half? You know, if I'm Florida, if I'm Coach Blankenship of Florida Gulf Coast, I'm just telling my team, listen, have confidence in your ability to compete, to play at this level. You deserve to be here. Um, you know, certainly, I think transitioning on offense has to be a focus for them. When they win the ball, transitioning as a team so they can close those gaps. For Tennessee, keep Keep the pedal on the gas, man. Just keep your foot down on it. They're doing great things. Already a quick start for Tennessee. Right out of the gates here at half number two. And I think this is a good game for Tennessee to really work on trying to get more players involved into the attack. I mean, obviously, Jada Thomas, Mackenzie George, those are two players that everybody's going to have their eyes on when it comes to this Tennessee offense. But can Tennessee start getting more goals by committee? Deflection off Curtis. And Tennessee already earning their first corner of the second half. They had five of them in the first 45, winning the corner game 6 nothing so far. And this time you've got Hannah Tillett taking it from the right side. Service hit from Tillett. And he doesn't find any volunteer. Leads to an Eagles throw it. And they reverse it. Tennessee will maintain possession. Any 
immediately, Mackenzie George earning another corner. I think they should keep a stat on who earns the corner kicks because I guarantee you Mackenzie George is probably leading in that category for the balls tonight. She is exceptional at, at just staying on top of the ball, putting them out, what? immense amount of pressure, no. creating opportunities for Tennessee, whether it be you know movement inside the box or through corner kicks or free kick opportunities. No one home for Tillett on that attempt. This ball skews out again for another Tennessee throw. It's Curtis on the defense. We can see there's a lot more communication between Lang and Curtis on that back line, making sure that the players coming through the middle are picked up. Service from Rain. That one's going to wind up a goal kick for Sullivan. Taylor Huff and Claire Rain, two freshmen who have made an impact. Taylor Huff, an assist in her first two minutes of collegiate action. Uh, and that's just a, an unfortunate turnover. But I like the idea. I like the quick restart by Florida Gulf Coast, trying to play the ball out of the back, maintain possession, give your team a chance. I like where the thought process was going on that. And that's one thing Coach Blake and Chip shared with us, Sandy, in our conversation was. Here's George trying to find that skin. Here's Fusco. And back out. Eskin on the wing, sends it forward. Sullivan dives and punched out by the Eagles. And that's good clearance by the Eagles. But Coach Blankenship had shared with us that regardless of who their opponent is, he really focuses a lot on his own team, which I commend him for that. And, you know, they're focused on trying to play their game. They have certain things that they're looking to do. You can see the cross there from Eskin, and look at the extension that Sullivan has on that. Being able to come up with a big safe, and on the other side of that was, was Grace Parrott is just able to clear that ball out for the Eagles. Corner number three for Tennessee. Rennie gets ahead on it, skews wide, goal kick. Three corner kicks for Tennessee so far in half number two. Just five minutes in, already maintaining the pressure they had in the first half. Goal kick from Sullivan straight to Hannah Tillett. And Eskin fighting LeBay on the right wing. George turning into the box, laying it off, trying to find Tillett. Here's Taylor Huff possessing, firing, and a laser beam over the goal. And Mackenzie George just doing what she is so exceptional at, and that is able to post up on her defender and spin them out. She spins right around them, able to get that cross off. And Taylor Huff almost with a near goal there. Coach Pinsky. Says of Taylor Huff, she's tireless. Almost they have to tell her to stop running so much. They need her just to find her spots where they come. Chance from Tillett, it squirts out, it's Fusco! It's three for Tennessee and they're on their way to an opening night victory. And Fusco, right place at the right time, posting up on top and that's what you want from your attacking midfielder. Somebody there to back clean up for you on top of the box. Sullivan goes for the save. You can see the frustration on her face. I mean, she's playing an exceptional game. She's playing her heart out. The amount of shots that she's had to defend against tonight. But you can see here Mackenzie George, a quick little flick. Hannah Tillett with the shot. 
Sullivan just unable to keep hands on it. And you've got Jordan Fosco just running up that got unmarked. And I think this is something that Coach Blankenship and his team, when they're reviewing this film, they need to really look at. You know, if you're going to play a three back, you've got to make sure to tighten up the gaps because the last place that you want penetration to come from is through the center. When you're playing a three back, those back line, your three players have to be so tight. If you're giving up space, you're giving up the space on the outside. It's a first career goal for freshman Jordan Fusco off the bench. So we've seen a freshman assist a goal and now score one. Your opening night, a great way to start out your Tennessee campaign. And Tennessee, three goals to the good. You know, one of the questions from Coach Pitsky coming into this season is can they get more people involved in the goal scoring efforts? Already three different goal scores tonight. It's McKenzie George running through, a ball in, goal number four, and it's Taylor Huff making an assist and a goal in her first collegiate action. And again, I think that just results from the three back getting stretched and you're not getting the cover that you need from the outside midfielder. As that three back, you're isolated. If, if that one defender gets beat on the outside and the cover comes over, which is laying that center back, you have that isolated player on the back post. So you can see Mackenzie George draws them out. You've got the 1v1 on the inside with Fusco. That leaves the player on the back side. Wide open, unmarked. And that's where the danger comes. So there has to be an additional person back. So if I'm Sullivan or if I'm Lane, I'm communicating to my midfielder saying, hey, you've got to pinch in and help out. You've got to come to the middle more because they are getting outnumbered every time on that back line. Well, floodgates are open now for Tennessee. Four goals to none. And they are well establishing this lead on opening night. And that's a good effort from deep. And I think Florida Gulf Coast has the personnel to play a three back. I think it's just a matter of tightening up. You've got the speed, you've got the talent, and you've got the vision in those back players. You know, you've got Lang on the back, you've got Curtis, Clark and Spitzer have kind of split some time out there. You've got, you've got the personnel to make those things happen. It's just a matter of tightening up in front of them, what happens in front of them, and making sure you're getting that cover. So if you're looking right now, you can see on the top of your screen, Spitzer needs to slide and pinch in a little bit more to provide additional cover because there's gaps in between laying the central defender and the outside back there. Fusco moves in between either one of them. There's that 1v1 isolation. And you have to say it was a well-deserved goal from Taylor Huff, who's given away several efforts on goal. Mackenzie George as well, a well-deserved assist. Absolutely. Hats off to Tennessee. Their movement off the ball and the speed at which they're doing it is exceptional. And I think, you know, the pace and the tone of the game is started with Thomas and Mackenzie George. We highlighted in the open the pace, the energy, and the consistency that those two players play with is, is phenomenal. And you can see the crowd is not pleased with the call. There's a handball in the box, but the new FIFA rules state that if the player is in a position where they cannot escape or, 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 or in a position where they cannot get out of the way, unless it's intentional, they let these balls go now. And they let that one slide. Saves the Eagles from giving way to a penalty kick. Already two goals in the half scored by Tennessee. Another chance. And the offside flag has been raised. I think at this point, you know, what do you have to lose at this point, right? It's four to nothing. If I'm Coach Blankenship, I would maybe roll the dice and play, you know, a 4-3-3 or, you know, a 3-4-3. I think that, you know, Florida Gulf Coast has to do something to press Tennessee back. Oh, good save by Sullivan coming across there. A confident run forward from Sullivan, who's given up two goals this half already, 10 minutes in, and trying to calm things down for her side. 
And Tennessee can afford to take risk in that back line because Florida Gulf Coast is only playing with two forwards. Tennessee has four backs, so they constantly have the numbers to be able to go forward and take risks. I think the Eagles need to, you know, probably look to add an additional forward up top. I know that's not necessarily what they want to do, but at this point they have nothing to lead. They need to try to keep some of Tennessee's defenders at home because what you have happening right now, that's Claire Rain making that run all the way forward. She's a defender, and nobody's there to pick her up. Eagles trying to play LeBay forward and we'll turn it over. But again, hats off to this program. I mean, every single one of these young women that are out there on the field in the blue jersey are representing their program well. They're playing with a high level. They're still competing. By watching the way that they're playing, you wouldn't know that they're down 4 nothing. Run forward for Melanson, going head-to-head -head with Rennie, a chance for Lilback. There's the Eagles' best chance of the second half thus far. And this is the type of coaching that Coach Blankenship brings to the Florida Gulf Coast. He's able to recruit players that want to hold themselves to high standards, who want to take this program to the next level. And that starts by playing against teams like Tennessee, having a heavy schedule like they have. You know, th this is a team that's gone on to play several teams um, and surprised them. You know, people often underrate their ability, but, uh, you know, Coach Blankenship has more than a qualified pedigree to, to churn out good players. Here's George off the bounce and wide. A goal kick for the Eagles. Head coach Brian Pitsky for Tennessee to not underestimate this opponent, calling the Eagles power five killers, and they've done so several times in the last year. Prolific team always in the Atlantic Sun. In 2018 alone, took down Ohio State, Alabama, and Michigan. So certainly a team that's used to being in these type of environments. And I would suspect that this team goes on to compete very, very well in their conference. I mean, they have a track record of being, you know, Atlantic Sun Conference champions, and, and I expect this year to be no different. Usually right there at the top of the pole as Tennessee on the attack again. Fusco behind her back, left-footed, skews for another goal kick. In the preseason poll of the Atlantic Sun, Florida Gulf Coast sits in third behind Lipscomb in North Florida for an Atlantic Sun conference that looks a lot different this year. They've added three different teams and now split into divisions for the first time. We see Brooke Wilson re-entering the game, relieving Jordan Fusco. Jordan Fusco did some incredible work while she was out on the field. She has to be proud of what she's put forth for the volunteers tonight. You know, when we look at Tennessee's back line, Lawson Rennie is on the back, and, and that's a player who we've typically seen play more in the middle to the front for Tennessee. And so the coaching staff, you know, mentioned, hey, you know, we really like to give you a shot in the back, and, and I think she's done exceptional. It's almost like it's natural for her, especially with the style that Tennessee likes to play where they like their backs to go forward. I think she is, is proven herself to be very solid in that center back position. She has exceptional vision, her placement. She understands the movements of forwards, the 1v1s. Well, you have to think a lot of factors went into play for assistant coach John Morgan to take a look and say, we're going to switch you back to center back this summer, given what we've seen for you. They think she has top three intelligence on the team at a speed that's up there with some of the fastest Tennessee players that, that Coach Pinsky's coach is what he's saying, about 30 kilometers per hour they've marked during practice. Well, I mentioned to Coach Pinsky during our call that, you know, she just looks fit. She's so explosive. Not that she wasn't before, but you can tell that she's really doubled down and has done the work. And they mentioned that, you know, when you're looking at speeds, they wear GPS trackers, these players do for Tennessee. And so you're able to to record and calibrate their output performance in every practice is, and what their speed is. And Lawson Rennie is right up there with Mackenzie George, Jada Thomas, um, you know, some of the faster players on this team. So 
um, hats off to her for really dedicating and doubling down and committing to her team and, and to herself. You know, obviously, when you come to play at Tennessee or any D1 program, you want to play. You want to get out there on the field. You want to know that the work you're putting in on the, on the summer is for a reason. And um, she certainly showed up for Tennessee in, in big ways for them so far these first two games. The sophomore out of Cincinnati, Ohio, as a freshman in her first year, she saw herself, herself in a multitude of different, posi uh, different positions, even found herself in goal against one of the top SEC teams in Texas A&M uh, when Lindsey Romig went down and the goalkeeper room was a little bit more short-staffed. And, you know, I think that just speaks a lot about her attitude and, and just team first, right? And, and that's the type of chemistry that you need on a successful team. Look at that footwork by LeBay, just so creative. She's always looking for ways to try to get people involved in the attack, and you can see why she was identified in the spring as one of the top freshmen by Top Drawer Soccer. Well, LeBay's been a little bit everywhere tonight for Florida Gulf Coast, causing fits both offensively and defensively. She's one of those players that if you can slip the ball in behind the defense, she's certainly going to wreak havoc with her speed. Tilla trying to play the ball forward, and Rennie decides just to send it back to Robig. Reset up this offense. Wilson, touch pass out to the left side. Searching for Eskin. Eskin turns and fires. It's popped back out. I think Eskin's had some, some great looks tonight as well. You know, Coach Penske and staff have challenged her to really um, become more than just a supporting cast member to the offense. They want to see her take more of a lead role. Can you do more than just be fast on the outside? Can you get yourself in some creative spaces where you can, you can um, have some goal scoring opportunities. And I think we've seen that from her tonight. I mean, she has, she has stepped up to the plate. She's had some phenomenal looks and you saw her trying to create some separation just in front of the box right there. So I think each of these players have taken to heart what this coaching staff has, has challenged them with in the spring. They've done the work over the summer and we're starting to see the fruits of their labor. Well, what do you return nine starters in 90% of your minutes from an SEC East title from a year ago? You have room and have the depth to pick and choose and, and get more players involved. LeBay working on Nelson. Pass the touch line. Twenty minutes in to half number two here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Way out in front at this point, four nothing in front of the home crowd to start the 2021 season. We've seen four different goal scorers, a lot of newcomers getting involved. An all around solid performance thus far for Coach Pinsky and his side. Wilson just on the edge of the box, out to Katz. Nelson floats one in, off the head, and deflected out. It was Zalusky who got a piece of it. I mean, one thing you can say about this Tennessee team, they're certainly not afraid to get inside of the box, and I think that's, you know, a big difference in what we've seen in the past couple of seasons. They're working hard tonight, create those opportunities inside the box. And when you when you take a look at some of these replays, you can see Nelson floating that ball in. Look at the number of white jerseys. You've got a player running near post, one straight at the keeper, and then that player on the back post. And can we talk about the timing of these runs? I mean, it's absolutely just on point this evening. You've seen a lot of one-touch shots, 
ricochets. And in soccer, we reference framing the goal, which means you're making the goal a little bit bigger with the proper runs inside of the box, and you've got the near post and far post runs. You're making the goal a little bit bigger. So if the ball pops out, you've got players in position just to punch it right back in. Cats are thrown in for Tennessee. Eskin service across, and no one's there. I think the test for Tennessee at the moment is, you know, when you have a lead like they do at the moment over Florida Gulf Coast, the real test is going to be, can you close it out? Can you keep your play elevated? Can you maintain control of this game? Um, I believe it was last year against LSU, Tennessee had the lead, and then all of a sudden in the last eight minutes, that game flipped on us. And it, it, you know, so is Tennessee, have they grown? Are they mature enough to be able to maintain a lead, maintain possession? Um, understanding that certainly, you know, you got a big game coming up on Sunday or, you know, in the next couple of days, you want to save your legs a little bit, but at the same time, you don't want to give up anything when you're out there on the field. Sub from the Eagles side, as it's Kara Kyra Marios. And Tennessee from their exhibition game last week against Alabama. Even though it was a game that didn't count, they still tied the Crimson Tide in a very rare exhibition matchup against an SEC rival. The tie they. They looked like the better team. They led in shots 18-3, but the execution just wasn't there. And now we flip to a week later. Tennessee has the execution to show for all the chances they've created. It's like a high boot from Cook. And a yellow card administered. Lawson Rennie on the first touch, and you can see Cook comes in. Looks like that shot went more to the shoulder. Nonetheless, that was a high kick, undoubtedly. Set piece opportunity for the Eagles. So this is an opportunity right now for the Eagles. One of the, the first ones that they've had in, in a while this evening for a second half. So. You know, this is a good opportunity for them to focus on the set pieces. But, Andy, when we talk about what it means to have a solid keeper, Lindsey Romack hasn't had much action tonight. This is where having a good keeper in the net can make a difference. Can she come up with a big save when needed? Scarpelli goes for goal and into the trees. We see freshmen checking in, Jenna Chatterton, Emmy Schliefer. So one thing, when you're looking at this game tonight, we've seen a number of personnel being used by the University of Tennessee on the field. We've seen them pretty much empty out their bench. We've seen action from, from, from everybody, player 1 through 34, right? They've got a ton of people out the field. They've had fresh legs coming at Florida Gulf Coast non-stop. That's exhausting, it's taxing. And obviously when you travel, you don't have the same roster size that you would when you're playing at home. And I think that certainly plays in to some of these matches, especially on the way. It's hard enough to grind it out when you're away. And then not being able to have the same number of fresh legs as perhaps your opponent is tough. Addy Eskin bounces off one defender. A lot of space to maneuver. No one's home on delivery. Scooped up by Sullivan. Rain rolling through Regal Soccer Stadium. A lot of sights and sounds. 
for opening night. Good crowd on hand to witness Tennessee begin their campaign. And I'll have to say the Eagles, you know, did a good job of trying to maintain possession right there. But what I'd like to see them do is to recognize the open space, find that point of attack. There were a couple of times where Lin Linstead had possession of the ball. And instead of playing the ball back and again wide and finding their player, um, Kyra Mario's on the outside, she's playing it right back directly into pressure. Tennessee had numbers on that side. So I think, you know, for Florida Gulf Coast, it's just recognizing making the decisions faster, knowing where you're going to go with the ball before you receive it. On the move is Lil back, the team's leading scorer. Plays one forward and a clearance from Rennie. And for the Eagles, Lil back, their top scorer from a year ago, they are without one of their potent forwards, Alyssa Abandolo, did not make the trip into Knoxville. And that's tough on the scene because together they combined for 13 goals on the season. Lilbeck had seven, Abandolo had six. So not having her a part of the attack, they're missing a critical piece to that offensive front. And this is the play that I was looking for earlier. Kyra Mario's playing to Romig. She took a touch off her foot and then dives on it. Secured by Lindsay Romig. That change, that point of attack right there is what enabled the Eagles to be able to break down Tennessee's defense. And if they can recognize those opportunities faster and execute it, I think you're going to have more opportunities. They're going to have more chances to get in. It's finding the space out wide, moving it from one side of the field to the other as quick as possible. And together you can see their team is pressing up a little bit higher. So they're contesting. There's not as much gap through the middle of the field. So Tennessee's having to work harder to maintain possession. So I think these are all positive things. And again, hats off to Coach Bl Blankenship and his coaching staff to, for, for sticking to the plan, right? And, and really pushing his team to stay committed and, and working through this. Last touch, Zaluski out of play for an Eagles throw. Just the start of Tennessee's campaign. They'll take on Miami, Ohio this Sunday. A couple of good non-conference matchups. They'll go on the road to take on a top 20 South Florida team. Similar opponent the Eagles will face as well this year. Check out the space from Kyra Marios. A lot of room to run. Dicing at the top of the box. Great recovery from Maria Nelson, who takes possession right back. And that was another good ball played across by the Eagles. Heads up for finding Kyra Marios. Again, they need to continue to find those pockets on the outside. Good pressure by Lilback. The and the team all has to commit. So if Lilbeck's pressuring, if she's got high pressure as she is, she's forcing Lawson Rennie to go a certain direction, right? So you know the ball is going to go back to Lindsey Romek. So the rest of the team, Florida Gulf, they have to get on the same page in terms of being able to step up. Good look by Lindstedt. Now they're starting to play. They're starting to gain possession. A lot of room again from Kyra Marios. Working on Nelson. Into the box and a little bit of help. A little Beck. Can't create any room and clear it outwards. And Kyra Marios with a quick little scissors there. Just trying to, to get the defender to bite for Tennessee. 
can see Tennessee holding that line. Of course, they've got Lindsey Romek to make sure that they're in, in all the right positions tight. That line has to be tight. Now just six shots so far this game from Florida Gulf Coast, but four of them have been on goal, so four saves for Lindsey Romick tonight. Romick already ninth all time in Tennessee career saves, entering just her junior year. Fifteen minutes left, there's still plenty of time on the board for either side to, to get another goal. But for Tennessee, it's a question of can they close the game out? Can they have solid time management without giving the ball up or allowing the Eagles to have too many opportunities? And I think this is where, you know, as players, that's where that consistency comes in, just being plugged in, focused, all the way until when the whistle blows. Now Tennessee undoubtedly was the favorite coming into this matchup. However, they were aware of Florida Gulf Coast's track record against Power 5 schools, so we're certainly on the lookout for them. However, Tennessee has obviously been the better team tonight. For that, do you credit preparation, or do you credit just the a, a different year, getting to have that preseason now, or is just a special night for them and getting a lot of people involved? You know, when I look at, at the team, both teams out on the field, I think the level of athletes that each team brings to the field is, is, is exceptional. I think the difference between these two at the moment is Tennessee's team, every single one of those players out there on the field wearing a white jersey is on the same page in terms of movement, communications. It's extremely choreographed play. They're moving in sync, left, right, forward, back. And so the gaps for the Eagles to find are minimal. What you have with Florida Gulf Coast is Two or three players move in one direction, four or five players are moving in a different direction. So again, I think it's just a matter of continuing to work together to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Tennessee able to work a few more subs back in for the final 14. Tennessee, they've already used 19 different players on the pitch tonight. A lot of action early for some of these players. A lot of newcomers, a lot of graduate transfers who are new to this program getting some first looks here in 2021. And that's important because when you talk about, you know, conference play, when you talk about postseason play, you are going to need to be able to call up on some of those players. And so it's important that they get that experience, that they become seasoned players. It's not like the first time they're getting in a game is against a Chapel Hill or a Duke. You know, you want to make sure that they're getting some quality minutes now because we all know that in the SEC, that is one heck of a conference. As a matter of fact, you have five teams in the SEC right now that are in the preseason top 25 coaching poll. That's pretty amazing. And should we mention that the majority of those are on the eastern side of the conference? So, you know, it's no easy feat playing in the SEC, so you have to be ready. You only have so many games to get you ready, and then it's go time. Now the SEC Conference as a whole, they returned just about 80% of players who earned first or second team honors last season. Whether that is just good young talent that this conference has, that they usually have, or just the extra year of eligibility, players are able to bring back their seniors. But just a really competitive conference as always. And you can see right there the preseason coaching poll. You got Arkansas, Texas A&M, South Carolina right there, Vanderbilt, and Tennessee at that number five slot. So, you know, pretty stout, and that's just within the SEC. That's how the coaches voted teams would fare out within the SEC conference. So Tennessee is, is favored at the number five slot, which, you know, if I'm Coach Penske and the Tennessee team, that's right where I want to be, right? Like, I'm not in the bottom half, but I don't have a target on my back. The only way for me to go is up. And I got time to do it. And to make things just a little bit harder, already a tough conference, you take a look at Tennessee's schedule. Those four teams above them, they've got to play each and every one of them. And they've got to play each one of them on the road. 
So it does not make it easy having to go into enemy territory against teams like Arkansas, Texas A&M, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt. And that's why you have to take advantage of the opportunities that you have when you are at home, right? Like get as many players in as you can, really focus on finishing while you can because, Andy, once you get on the road, and once you get on the road at conference play, it, it's just a gut match. It's grittiness. You may only get three shots the whole game, and two of them may come off corner kicks. So you've got to have – you have to have every element of your game dialed in. It has to be corner kicks, set pieces, restarts, goal kicks, you know, everything. And every player has to be dialed in. This is a Tennessee team that has certainly high aspirations for this year, returning as many dynamic players as they – have, however, to win a title like they think they can in the regular season, it's going to have to come through the road. Well, and a lot of the work that, you know, Tennessee has done that I think has really helped them is, is it's not necessarily always about what you're doing on the field. It's about all the little things that you're doing when you're not playing. So immediately following this game, are you getting your ice bath, okay? Taking that ice bath, that 10-minute ice bath, that's going to recharge your legs. It's removing all that lactic acid so that you're able to move and fly on Sunday when asked, okay? Not only that, it's diet, it's nutrition, strength agility training. And, you know, when you come to these big D1 schools like the University of Tennessee, resources are plentiful. On the flip side, Florida – Gulf Coast, you know, they've got a lot of resources, but the fact that they're able to come and compete at this level with not quite as much, I think that says a lot about their program as well. Florida Co Gulf Coast, still very young team, technically 15 freshmen, and this is the first time they're actually getting a fall season, the first time they got to play in an exhibition game to start things off, and the first time they're getting a non-conference slate to play some of these tough teams to help them in their conference tournament. Well, and I think what people have to keep in mind, too, is that when you're looking at what it takes to get into the NCAA tournaments, it's a lot about your RPI, right? So it's all about the schedule that you play, strength of schedule you play. So you can lose. Like them losing to Tennessee, that's not a bad gig because if Tennessee goes on and does well, that game is now weighted higher in the RPI for them. So, um, you know, that's why you do want to play some good teams, and you want to play teams – who you think are going to end up winning their conference because, again, it's weighted a little bit differently. So it's it's there's this whole algorithm into getting into the tournament, and these coaches, I don't know how they have it figured out, but somehow or another they do it every year. The Eagles will take on Florida, 20th-ranked South Florida, and then top-ranked to start the season, Florida State. It's a hefty non-conference slate. But think about how primed they're going to be come conference time for them. Playing against those top-ranked opponents, those top-notch opponents, this Florida Gulf Coast team, when it comes for them to play in their conference league games, they're going to be so primed and ready to go. Spitzer fighting for possession. It's Maria Nelson who earns the throw in. So to see now has worked 20 players into this match. Continue to make substitutions as the clock winds down. When I think you can see that there's been a big difference in this last half of the second half versus the first half in terms of just their defensive performance and their offensive performance, their ability to step up and compete. The first couple of minutes of this second half, Tennessee came out, put two goals away quickly. We haven't seen that yet again. You know, so you can see that this team is, is starting to work harder together to make the right decisions. A nice little move there from Coach Pitsky as he is surely pleased at the performance from his squad. Kenzie George has worked hard in this one. She works down the right wing. Here's Huff. Abby Burdett. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 
NSC moving the ball around. Is there any left for the Volunteers in game one of the season? Deepa Supel floats one up for Huff off her head. Back of the net. Brilliant timed header from Taylor Huff. Two goals for the freshman. I mean, can we say on fire? Taylor Huff, right position, right place. I mean, just the precision, her ability just to make sure that she's heading that ball down and low. Skips across, you have Deepa Supel. Again, floats that ball high enough. Taylor Huff comes across, power heads it down on the ground just beneath Sullivan. And you can see Dippa Supel, a nice little move to get past her defender and Taylor Huff on fire. Well, there's a reason she was the National Player of the Year in high school last year, and she is certainly living up to that hype. Two goals and an assist, that would be a stat line someone would be proud of at the end of the season. You do it in game one. I hear all freshmen of the week, potentially. Freshman of the week for her, honors. I mean, just an exceptional opening performance for Taylor Hoff. And yes, you hit on the fact that, you know, she was an All-American high school player in Tennessee, bringing in the 17th ranked class for high school All-Americans. Certainly an impressive debut for Taylor Huff. Her high school stats were out of this world. She's the career state leader in assists, 93 career assists in high school, over 130 goals. She's used to this type of thing. And that's all about timing. I mean, you, you have to train to understand the timing, right? And not only that, but you really have to get to know your players. You have to get to know the speed of service that they're heading across. Um, just the little moves that they do. It's all about timing, and that only happens with practice, 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 practice. Here's Huff again. Space to run, brilliant ball forward for Fusco. She lets it roll to Deepa Supel. Does Tennessee have another? And Fusco just can't get the touch on from Deep Supel. She was hanging out in the right location. Had she got a stop on that, I think she would have had a solid look on goal. Foot on the gas pedal for Tennessee. They run forward again and earn a corner. Ninth corner kick of the night. Twenty-five shots for Tennessee. Twelve of them have been on goal, and here's Tillett. Up high. Chance for Deepa Supel. Make it six. Claudia Deepa Supel, right place, right time. Sensational opener for Tennessee. This time she's on the receiving end of the corners. You had Hannah Tillett providing that service, and Deepa Supel just staying after it, tucking it in the net, giving Tennessee... A solid lead there, 6 nothing. You can see again, Hannah Tilla putting the arc, that backspin. Dippa Supel staying after it. Mackenzie George, we should note the screen that Mackenzie George is, is providing, making it difficult for Sullivan to see that ball coming in. So you can see that this Tennessee staff has, has worked. They put a lot of diligent work in making sure that things are happening. And you can see, again, the ball coming across. And you can see the screen that Mackenzie George sets up. That ball slips just between her feet. Sullivan never had a chance to see it. And again, the diligent work that this Tennessee team and staff has put in into the execution of these set pieces, corner kicks, so forth and so on. We talked with Coach Pinsky before the game about how good teams have multiple goal scorers. He already has two individuals with two-plus goals on game one and then two others to accompany them. And we have to give a shout out to Coach Joe Kurt. He's the one who really works hard with this Tennessee team on those corner kicks, those set pieces. Till it, top of the box. Tennessee relentless pursuit. That ball. And Hannah Tillett, she's another player that I'd like to kind of give a shout out to. I mean, you know, when we 
when you met, when you look back at what the preseason looked like last year compared to this year, players weren't allowed to play in leagues. They weren't allowed to play in the summer leagues and teams. But this year was different. Hannah Tillett was able to play for the Lady Chattanooga Red Wolves, playing with higher caliber players, that next level. Lots of game repetition, I think, has really helped elevate her game this year and also make sure that she's in solid shape for this season. Dillett certainly has been heavily involved, whether it's been from an attacking midfield position or from the corner or set piece. She's made her presence felt. Another fantastic ball forward. Play in a lot of space for Huff. Could not place it for the hat trick. I mean, I think she's taken off parts of the net tonight. Little by little, but it was Hannah Tillett's turn in the middle of the field. Just a cut behind her standing leg, finding the open space on the far side that allowed for that redirection of that service. And you can see the look that Hannah Tillett takes over her shoulder before she receives the ball. A little cut back, the pass with the left foot. And on the far side, you had Bartholomew running onto it and then Huff with an almost one goal. Minute, minute. Just... Eagles searching for a final say. Lindsay Rowe Mig stretching the legs and making the save. Not taking any chances, making sure she's smothering that ball. Nothing pops out. Romick taking her time, just 35 on the clock. And a statement opening night for Tennessee. Left no questions in this one. If people didn't have Tennessee on their radar before tonight, I think they do now. This has been an outstanding performance from Tennessee. The question coming in tonight's game, could they finish? I think they've answered that with a resounding yes. They certainly have executed 27 shots equals six total goals as the clock winds down. First night at Regal Soccer Stadium is a big win for the Big Orange. Final score against the Eagles, six, nothing. A huge home win for Tennessee. It's a great opening home match for the University of Tennessee and Florida Gulf Coast being able to travel up here and compete the way that they did. I think that there's a lot that they can take away from this game and apply it um, you know, for the rest of their season. Excited to have them here, but Tennessee coming home with the big win tonight. Yeah, Tori, it was an absolutely all-around effort. Full 90 minutes, Tennessee tally six goals. Four different goal scores, two goals, one assist for Taylor Huff, and a great night for all in the orange and white. Well, from the whole SEC Network crew, Tori Beeler Watson, Andy Brock, wish you good night, and thank you for joining us here on opening night. Tennessee, the home side, grabs a huge dub, 6-0 is your final score.